What? Hey. Hey. <laughs> How you doing? Bro, I'm so tired that I'm delirious. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Code Switching Naturally. I'm AJ. I'm Channy. And, um... Yeah, so we're going to get through this because, um, I don't know if you can tell, but we both are a little out of it today. Um, I've had an adventure for two weekends in a row, which is a lot for me. Yeah, you don't do that. No. You don't go go into the out. No, and I went into the out twice. (laughs) You did. You know, I watched that movie last night, and it was hilarious. I also watched Malcolm and Marie. Nice. We'll talk about that offline, though, because, baby... I laugh. I cackled <laughs> my whole way through that movie. Lovely. I love that for you. <laughs> like you, you asked me to spend two hours for them to argue <laughs> about a speech. That's it. But anyway, I pushed a child. <laughs> I went to a hands-on haunted house and it was really fun up until that little boy wouldn't fucking move. He wouldn't move. He wouldn't fucking move. And I'm trying to get out. They said at the front door that I'm a target. I wasn't playing. I said, I'm going to get out. He wouldn't move. I pushed him to the ground. And then I fucking football star jumped over him like he was like the 50-yard line, jumped over that little nigga, and I got out. Okay, but what? why were you a target, though? I don't know. I I don't know why I was a target. Okay. I was just at the door, and the, the little clown dude came in my face and was like, I'm going to get you. And I said, no, you're not, sir. <laughs> first of all, why is you so close? That's the first thing that I <laughs> You had. all up in my face. Why is you, you in my face like that? Like, you're not going to touch me. See, but you know what? Is, this is why I know haunted houses are not for me. My reflexes is to hit. <laughs> And you have been a recipient of a couple of those blows. <laughs> and so you already know. You take me to a haunted house. I'm swinging. And one of the haunted houses, I'll never forget it to say. How are we supposed to jump on this? I don't know. But we'll come back in a minute. <laughs> but um, one of the haunted houses, you know how they used to, like, set up in random spots across the city each year? So the one where the Barnes & Noble is on San Jose, like, that little area that used to be yeah. empty. It used to be empty. And so they had set up a haunted house. See, I was like, they kept saying this was the best haunted house in the city, and it was great, and it was amazing. And so me and my homegirl was like, oh, yeah, we finna roll up. Well, first of all, the parking was atrocious because it really was the hottest in the city. Like, the line was wrapped around the building. Oh. And um, I knew it wasn't for me when I saw people and the actual, like, you know, um, what you call them? The scare actors? Yeah, the actors were able to come out of the haunted house. Yeah. So they, one was like this thing with this weird baby it was holding. One had a chainsaw. And then the other one was the clown. Now, I'll never forget the clown because I was driving and I was sitting here waiting for cars to come and waiting for people to pass by, right? And I was minding my business. as As one does. And next thing I know, I'm talking, running my mouth. I'm like, oh, this looks cool. This looks like it'll be a good time. People running out, though, so I don't know if I'm going to be okay with that part. But um, my friend was like, me and her was looking at each other. And out of nowhere, I'm like, what is that behind her? Like, what is it? The clown is in the in the window like this, just... <laughs> Just staring. I said, you know what, friend? We're going to go. Um, we're not going to. Nope. I experienced enough. Um, we're going to go because this is out of control. No, man. We're not doing that. That's hilarious. So I know haunted houses are not for me. Now, if you want to go to a corn maze or you want to do a pumpkin patch or you want to go do a little tiptoe somewhere, but, you know, Holly, the the, the the horror nights and all that stuff. I'm I not going to pay those. money to punch somebody. Okay, well, not that, but I love those. Me and my best friend, we went, and I did leave them. I left them. Um, <laughs> at one point, they weren't fucking moving, and I we were holding hands, and I said, listen, if you're not going to go, I'm going to leave you. I will abandon you. 
I made it very clear. And I did. She got kidnapped. They were taken somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know where they went. And I said, I'm getting the fuck out. And I did. Lord. Lord. I will abandon your ass. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're going to do? Okay. Well, um, well, that's, um, okay. Uh, In case know. you were wondering what I was, you know, doing on my vacation, that was all. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad you're back in one piece. She didn't hurt herself this time, praise God. No, I did. Um, but <laughs> we touched on this last episode when we were talking about music of the week, and we realized that with everything that is going on in both of our lives and this journey of life um i think it's i think it would be robbery if we do not discuss our views on manifestation versus faith okay um today church was a little rough not because you know i didn't enjoy the word or it we wasn't what i needed but it was like a um it made me realize that the world is taking manifestation to mean that you can tell god what you want right and he's going to answer that Rather than you hear from him what his desire and his will is for you, mm -hmm. and you manifest that. Right. Because manifestation comes when faith is the root of it. Right. Without your faith, do you really manifest? I think that's a really interesting thing to say, especially with, like, as a person who has acclimated with, like, especially the neo neo spiritual um, kind of thing, manifestation has been a very extremely popular thing. Because why wouldn't you want the idea of whatever I want, I can just create it. Whatever it is that it would make me feel better, I would. It would just, I can just create that. And the th reality is, that's not always necessarily what best serves you. At the end of the day, because just because I want to manifest a million dollars. Does that mean I'm going to know how to steward that million dollars when I get it? Does that mean I'm going to know how to serve others it, who, exactly. who doesn't have access to a million dollars or money in general? Like, can you steward what you have right now? Can you be servant? Can you be a servant or can you be obedient to the space you're in right now? And I realized that Here's the even crazier part. I know you've heard me say that I want to go back to D.C. Mm -hmm. I have had a very interesting revelation about that. I don't want to go back to D.C. But the posture I was in while I was in D.C., I lost that when I came back. Yeah. All I had was worship and the belief that God is going to see me through Mm -hmm. because I have no other choice. I still have no other choice. But the point is, it's easier to fall back on, well, I don't have to stress about this because this is taken care of. I don't have to stress about this because this person is always going to be there. And I was stripped of that as soon as I got back. Well, not as soon as I got back, but now that I'm here and I'm planted it was stripped for me. Right. Because I began, to, again, to lean on that instead of lean on what it was I discovered about God and who he is and to me in the first place. Which, I realized that us as kids, we were definitely led very wrong in the aspect of who God is what he wants from us, how he wants us to serve, how he wants us to give, how he wants us to exist as someone made in his image. Right. Like, you hear all the time, oh, you can't question God. Oh, 
God is this, God is that, God's upset if you don't do this. All God said was, I need you to believe in me. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that uh, a lot of faith-based things, when it starts and in, in its origin, you know, when it's when it comes about God, I mean, yeah, it's a beautiful image of God, but then somehow we end up accidentally designing an image of God out of fear. It's not accident. You're right. It's not accident. It's not accident. It's, it's not purposeful. an accident that <clears throat> Europeans were taught the Christian faith and then decided to take it and turn it into something to control their outcome. It's not an accident. That's true. It's not an accident that the Baptist church was started because somebody couldn't get their kids baptized in the Catholic church. That's not an accident. They couldn't get what they wanted, so they went and created something that fits in their favor, not God's favor, their favor. And it's and that's where it kind of gets lost because Christianity as a whole is not what it's supposed what it's slated to be or is presented as now. Yeah. God didn't ordain it for us to be afraid of him. And your posture as Okay, so you know they throw around God loves a chill forgiver, love God loves this, your posture, your heart and da da da. da. Yeah. Well, they also don't tell you about that story where God was watching their hearts for giving and giving wasn't always monetary. Yeah, because it's not always of monetary value. Can you show up for that person and just be that shoulder to cry on? Can you provide that person with a place to stay? Can you provide the person with the shoes off your feet? Can you provide that person with food when you have it? It's even in tithing. Like people think that tithing is just monetary. I'm just giving money to the church. Tithing isn't just I give 10% of my possession to the church or give it to God. It's also can you put your time in to serve the community? Can you be a brother, a sister to your to the body of Christ? Can you be can you be there? It's, it's ministry time. doesn't stop just because it's no longer Sunday. That that part. Ministry doesn't stop just because service is over or you don't have your collar <clears throat> on or you don't have to you don't have your badge on that says you're an usher or it doesn't say that you're a deaconess or a deacon like it doesn't stop there and i think that a lot of the reason why our generation leaves the church mm. is because i mean besides the obvious of church hurt and um old school traditions and old school ways of thinking um kind of judge us but also we want the truth yeah we want to seek the truth. And I think that's that especially has to be addressed on both sides, especially when it comes to like church hurt. Um, if we have it like a whole bunch of like a body of kids that are of, of our generation who leave the church, maybe there is a reason for that. We can't just be like, well, all of our children are just being given to the devil. I don't know what's going on. It has nothing to do with the devil, As, but they just seek, they just want to seek their the, church somewhere else. Exactly. Like there, and that's also why like, a lot of times people ask me a lot about my faith because it doesn't look like anyone else's. And also because I don't like the idea of ascribing to religion. I don't I like don't ascribing to, religion to religion religious dogma. At all. At all. And so I prefer to save my spirituality. I prefer to lean into what it, it is. It is spirit-based. I'm going to say it is ghettos. I, can't, I believe in Jesus. Jesus H. Christ. It it really like at the basis of it, I I you know, I believe Jesus, I believe in, you know, covering of God. I believe in the Holy Trinity, I believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And I have actually been learning more about the Holy Spirit and being more in tune with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Um and it's a lot harder than one would think. Because that's what dwells within you. And so you try to learn what's the Holy Spirit and what's the flesh. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning that I have to die, essentially die to my flesh every single day. And today was just really rough for me because I'm having to reevaluate the things that I said I heard God say to me and the things that I heard spoken. And I, I was like, okay, God, if, if this is you, tell me, tell me this is you, like give me a sign. Let me know that this is you speaking. I'm having to 
reflect on was it built out of fantasy of my flesh or was it built out <clears throat> of my imagination that you set forth for me it goes back to that idea did we design this message did we design this version of god mm -hmm. that that we want it to be mm -hmm. or is this actually the the god that we that we serve or we are trying to serve that we're hearing from that and that's quote, really hard to do it is and that quote it it, it convicts me every single time it says um you can never hear God's voice because you keep telling him what to say. That is true. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm like, nah, I know what God sound like. And I know what I sound like. Cause when I, when I know it's coming directly from me, mm -hmm. like this is what I want. This is what I want to do. My body be like, mm, no, nah, sis, we restless. That ain't, that ain't it. But it's something about being settled in something that you hear or something that you that you feel so every time I try to like make sure I'm not tripping or make sure that it's it's in the space of of God I always try to say God if it's not for me don't let it come to fruition mm -hmm. and sometimes okay and the thing I, the, the thing that I also don't I wish we learned more of as kids or understood more of is the power of prayer. Very. They tell you much. to pray. They give you the same. God is good. God is great. Let us thank him for our food. Bow our heads. We all are fed. Thank you, Lord, our daily bread. Um, the Lord's prayer and stuff like that. But what about when you're in your darkest hour and you have no words to say? What are you supposed to say? I think that also, like, um, prayer isn't always just asking. Not even it's, asking, but it's, just, just It's just be, you're in communion with you. It's you and God. That is prayer. Even if there are no words spoken, if it is just you and God, and it's just you, spirit, that's it. You are in that moment of prayer. You are doing what needs to be done. He can hear you even when you, he does, when you don't speak. This is true, and I get that, but it's still, because not so much asking for something, but, like, what? For me, prayer is hard because I'm so stuck in it. You know how people be praying and be like, and, and in your name, Lord God, and Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for Lord God, we just thank you for Lord like God that. and Lord God and Lord God. And I'm like, I could never pray like I that. I get it. Like, Lord God, he heard you the first Lord God. <laughs> like, why are we, you ain't said nothing in five minutes, but Lord God, thank you, Lord God, Lord God. <laughs> and I'm like, I get it. That's your way of praying as well. But when you're trying, but for me, when people, you can tell when somebody's genuinely praying. Yeah. And when somebody's putting on a show. And for me, it's very hard to want to pray with you mm -hmm. or to feel like this is a prayer that I'm supposed to let the Holy Spirit welcome itself into when it's just... Ugh. I love her. <clears throat> At Bethel, this baby is a... Pray this lady is a praying woman, Okay. She is a praying woman. We bless God for praying women, okay? Period. But it's hard for me to get past the yelling. Because, baby, she goes zero to 5,000 in a second. You got you to gotta get it. You got to get it and fast. She be, like, <laughs> she be yelling so hard, you see her, her whole bottom, like her whole diaphragm move. <laughs> like, you should be like, I be like, this. like you're gonna hurt yourself <laughs> like relax but it's I realize it's the passion of like the love of God and I, I get it but sometimes the the packaging is lost upon me it's important to find your method of communicating with your God because I know for me prayer my prayers don't sound like or feel like anybody else's. Like, I really, like, I talk to God like I talk to, I would talk to anybody. I was going to say, I hope you don't talk to God like you talk to your echo. Listen, echo, my echo needs to be spoken to a little rough. <laughs> she she don't, be like, she be like, echo, 
Shut up. Because, like, because Echo what? don't, she don't listen. Alexa don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to be spoken to a little rough. She do not be, she be letting, a, she be letting her echo have it, baby. But I, like I said, I talk to God, I be like, hey, God, listen, hey, bro. See, mm. that's it. <laughs> I, I literally, last time, I think at one point I caught myself because I was like, yo, dude, bro. No, like sometimes, <laughs> and I realized like, and this is why I've, I'm, I've always enjoyed this journey. Like, even though sometimes I'll be like, God, you really playing with me and I'm going to need you to cut it out. Like, stop playing with me. Like, I know you're not playing, but stop it. Like, what is going on? Why are we, why, why are you doing this? And let me tell y'all something, okay? Let me tell y'all something right now. God and his sense of humor is unmatched. Phenomenal. <laughs> it's Phenomenal. Un, it's unmatched. Like, <laughs> dude, your, your humor, my God today. And I think we should, we definitely should talk about, like, prayer a lot more. The fact that it doesn't have to be so doesn't have to be so designed. Job literally just started yelling at God. He was upset. He was angry. He, he was. had to get it. He just had to get it out. And God sat there and listened. Because you allowed to be mad. You're going to do what you need to do. But you're allowed to be yeah, mad. And that is the thing that I've discovered this year. Just because God told you to do something doesn't Don't mean you going to like it. it. That cheerful giver stuff. That's some bullshit. Okay? <laughs> cheerful give. God wants to know what your heart posture is. That's what they mean by cheerful giver. If your heart posture is, okay, God, I'm going to be obedient. I don't like that shit, but I'm going to be obedient. Period. Listen, That's I might not different. be happy about it, but it'll get done. And and and, and I, I praise God for, for Michael Todd's, like, faith in his ability to just go out there with it and be like listen y'all don't have to agree with this you don't have to like it i'm doing the lord's work and if you don't like it that's your business but he was like you you don't have to do it with a smile on your face you don't have to do it willingly you just have to do it because at the end of the day you don't need to act like pretend like oh i enjoy the suffering that i'm going through no no Mm -mm. you're allowed uh, you are allowed to be upset. And that just goes with like any spiritual practice. If you are going through it and you're like, listen, I know I need to do this, but this is making me upset. Be upset. This makes me a better therapist because I'm learning that so many things can coexist and they still be valid at the same um, time. And you can love the Lord and still be totally upset at the fact that you have been given this design of being able to handle that type of weight. Like the amount of things that I've been through or the, the things that I've endured or the way that I've been treated or the way that the list of things that Ariel has, AJ rather has endured. Most people wouldn't be able to handle this. Most people wouldn't feel the level of confidence that I felt. And, like, you, you're you a testament to this. Like, there's some days where I wake up and I'm like, girl, I don't feel it today. Like, I'm not feeling myself. I don't feel pretty. I don't feel like today is going to be a good day for me. But y'all won't see it. Y'all won't see it until somebody piss me off. I'm a short fuse. But as far as my confidence, it outside of my household, it does not waver. Right. And so <laughs> I have to clear this up because she asked me to. Um, oh, yeah, mom. So a few episodes back, I said that she doesn't like me. But in essence, that's how I learned my level of confidence or my ability to be okay with being by myself or understanding God a little more. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the time I was the oddball or I was the rebellious one in a sense. And so back then I could tell my mother didn't like me. My brother found me absolutely annoying I mean, I'm a f- I'm four years younger. Yeah, and Quentin is a boy, so <laughs> clearly 
there was going to be some irritation. And then my dad was just who he was, and his his fuse was of a mustard seed as well. So it was just, it stood to reason. Ariel kind of cost a lot at the time. Right. So I just felt like they didn't understand me. I was like, why don't they like me? And it was just kind of like, well, well, shit. If you, if they don't get it, and if they don't like you, you like you, and you understand you. And they always, they, I used to be in Awana, so our biggest thing was learning Bible verses and learning about the Lord. And it was like, you got badges, you got these. It was almost like another version of Girl Scouts. Yeah. But like. But for Jesus. But for Jesus. And so. Girl Scouts for Jesus. I had a vest and I would earn these patches and these things, that these different Bible lessons that I learned. And Esther was one of those was one of my favorite stories as a kid not david and goliath not noah's ark none of those but esther and i was young like seven eight and esther was my favorite story and it was the notion that no matter if people understood it no matter how many people pushed her away she kept her head down she did her work and she said i'm not going back to what i used to be i'm not going back to where i was and she told her mother-in-law baby uh-uh, i ain't going back where you go i go who you who you your people shall be my people and your god my god like i'm not i don't know if you know this or not but this is what it is like right. and something about her just spoke to me in a way of like it's okay to stand on yours. Mm -hmm. It's okay to stand on your own, no matter if people want you to do it or not, no matter if people understand it or not. God sees it, and God's going to bless you for it anyway. How I knew that at seven and eight, I don't know. Don't ask me how I knew, but I knew. But for me, sometimes my flesh and my need to be logical Mm -hmm. And my need to always understand things to know how to protect myself gets in the way of my faith. And it's hard because right now, I know what God told me. I know what he said. I remember when he said it. Because I, oh baby, you you know what? You may not get on God's nerves, but baby, you can wear him out out asking him <laughs> to clarify something he didn't clarify to you 15 times i heard one pastor say that at some point god is if sometimes the reason you're not hearing anything from god is because he already told you <laughs> <laughs> and that's just a man on that listen like sometimes he already said what he said he said what he said and at this point, I don't hear it no more because he said it. And I said, okay, well. I guess the last thing um, you told me was it. That was <laughs> the last message. I got it. Now, I will say this. The thing that's getting hard for me in the message today, it was just like, just just believing. It's, it's reframing, making your frame bigger, and understanding that you just have to believe it. If God said it, God gave you the imagination And it's going to be for his will and not yours. And it's not going to be for your glory, but his glory. You just have to stand on the fact that you believe it. Whether your flesh falters, that's fine. That's when you say, Holy Spirit, take over where I'm weak. I learned that today. Yeah. Because I heard what he said. But for me, I'm like, okay, God, but okay, but, but if that's what you said, why is this happening? If that's what you said, Mm -hmm. help me understand why it has to go this way. Help me understand. Because it doesn't, I'm not suffering. It's just putting me in a a very uncomfortable and a very much like, God, come on, God. I think that's probably my biggest, my biggest issue is that. It's not necessarily believing is a hard thing for me because of the thing, the experiences that I've had in my life. It was only God. It was only ever God. I, I, it I was wouldn't be here any other way. Exactly. So, like me believing that I will, I at the end of the day, God got me. I already know that. Period. Right. What I'm, what bothers me is that I get upset because of what I have to endure while I'm trying to get there. And you know, it's crazy. We ask God for these things. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, like we said, hey, God, teach me patience. Hey, God, give me the patience. Okay, he's not going to give it to you. He's going to put you through it so you learn it. And it's really and like, it's like, God, come on now. I just said, give me patience. I ain't say test me. Right. But no, it's, yes, you did. You, that's exactly what you said. Every time I've said, God, I want to be this person, or God, I want to exist like this, he's, I have to endure. Door. To, all this to know what you're gonna have like. to learn how to do it and also you have to learn how to do it so you continue to know that it's god and not you exactly because at the end of the day nothing that we do nothing that we can fathom and today i actually i don't know why it hit me in the face so hard but it was like take the cap off god mm -hmm. stop limiting god to what your brain can fathom yeah yeah you want to be married that's it you don't want to inspire other people with what a godly marriage could look like you don't want to inspire people to live the life that they live in their truth you don't want to do that you don't want to inspire people to take their mental health seriously you just want to be a good therapist sure okay but what else i think that is amazing to think that you really can live your most wildest dreams. And it still not be big enough. And it's still not big enough for what the the ability, the ability of what the creator can do for you. And Man. with you, through you. Girl, okay. Oh Lord. I didn't pluck the hole in my leggings. Oh. Okay. Claws. I mean, whatever. Um my God. But okay, girl. Okay. <sighs> want to close it up you ready <sighs> yeah we could talk about this one forever i mean honestly i mean this could be a very long episode but we're not gonna do that um you know what time it is yeah you ready yeah girl it's music of the week Music of the week, hey, hey, music of the week, hey, music of the week, hey, hey. Okay, well, since we're still on this episode, baby. Oh, he's good. Okay. Ain't um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so the original song that I originally had planned got kicked to the bucket. We're going to cover it on another episode, you know, Music Man of this month. Um... Yeah. Okay. So I probably drove her nuts with this song. Maybe, maybe not. But on our way here, it was a constant reminder that even when it doesn't feel like it, even when you just feel like you just going through it and you need that encouragement, Fred Hammond has one of the greatest songs of all time called All Things Are Working. And, um, yeah, I needed that today. Because um, all things are working. Even when it don't feel like even, it. Even when it, ooh, even when it hurt, baby. Because, baby, it's been hurting me. I know. I know it. I've been, shh, man. Um, I'm still out of it. Like, I didn't even realize it was homecoming week. Oh, yeah. Um, Shout out, first of all. Happy Founders Day to Happy the great. Happy Founders Day to the great Bethune, Bethune Cookman, Cookman, Cookman University. University. And to the little rattlesnakes. Shout out to y'all too. I mean, I guess. Happy yeah. Founders Day to Florida Agriculture and Mechanical University. Shout out to y'all as yeah. well. I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no shade. <laughs> for real, for real. Happy H like HBCU love. Shout out to our cousins over on for the real, Seven We Hills. do, we do love y'all. We do love y'all. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But happy homecoming as well, Cookman. Um, enjoy. I haven't been keeping up with football at all, but um, as far as Apparently I know, we we're in trash. Swack, we so are we are in swack and we're trash. We're right trash now. right now. Yeah, we got swept yesterday. Yeah, we didn't get swept like a goose egg, but we got swept. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, oh right. So my music of the week, and I can't wait to explain why. But <laughs> my music of the week, I'd finished our, my homework. Praise God. And I listened to Yeba's album. Uh-huh. And my favorite song is Boomerang. Now, let me tell you why. Okay, so, no, no, no. 
she's going to save her explanation because she has to give her explanation at the beginning of Music Mana at the end of the month. That's so, a good idea, yeah. We're going to save that. But for you, that's really awesome. Boomerang was a good song. Boomerang was good. Um, That's not the one where she had... um. She doesn't have a feature on that one, does she? I don't think so. No. That's not the one with ASAP Rocky, is it? Uh, no, 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 no. No. Eh. No. Eh. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. Where's mm. my phone? We're gonna <laughs> intermission. We're gonna Google real quick. Let's see. Mercy. My God. Mercy. We not organized. Yes, we are. We're very much Oh no, Boomerang is not. No. Boomerang does not have a feature. <laughs> But um, this was a little longer than normal, but, you know, you can't rush Jesus. You can't rush the um, Lord. Also, um, please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, because we do share this on YouTube. Um, listen our to our podcast on, yeah, you on know, the other listen stuff. Listen to it. Um, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Reasons. Um, do we have title? I don't think we're I don't, on title. I don't think we're on title. I don't know. I think we can figure that out. I think out. we have to get a sponsorship. I don't sponsor me. I, listen, if if people want to have like sponsorships on here, and listen, um, I'm trying to get paid for my personality. I'm tired of working. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anywho, um, ring the post notification bell so you can see it every time we post. It drops. Every Friday. Every Friday, various times, because, you know, we be busy. I work. You know, I have a whole full-time She worked during the day. I work during the night. She worked during the night and day. And yeah, praise God. God. Um, so, yeah. Um, and, again, I'm AJ. I'm Chani. And we'll see you guys next video. Next video. Bye. Oh, wait. Well, next week, next podcast, because, listen, y'all, we do double time, because we do both. But, anywho. If you're listening through Apple Podcasts, hey, y'all. If you're listening through the podcast streaming systems or whatever, we appreciate y'all. If you watch it on YouTube, we appreciate you, too. Just follow, subscribe on all the things you can subscribe and follow on. Share it with a friend. And share it with a friend because we're a good time. We're, like, funny. We're, we're funny. <laughs> Duh. But, okay, guys, until next time. Bye. Bye.